All right. So, um, thanks, everybody. I'm excited to be on this call. Again, I'm the founder of the Narco Resilience Network. And um, this network is, I, I started um, a couple years ago. Um, it's an intersection of the, all the crises that are happening with climate change and racial justice. And, um, you know, we know climate change is already here. So how can we prepare for those impacts? And our vision is to um, support a regenerative revolution, regenerative revolution that transforms our homes, neighborhoods, communities into self-sufficient, just, and regenerative places that are far less reliant on fossil fuels and ready for anything. And that includes earthquakes as well, natural disasters. So, um, wait, what is going on here? Here we go. So the, the, the resilience that we're looking at is rooted in community, nature, equity, and love is, is an important one as well. Um, and our theory of change is first of all, empowering the grassroots people like you that are doing amazing work in the communities and building a network that we can show, we can share resources and prioritize funding so that um, community organizers can be paid. We integrate disaster preparedness and response with climate mitigation and greenhouse gas emissions projects. We support frontline and diverse communities first and foremost, and we really try to cultivate collaborations and partnerships to focus on the common ground and reaching beyond our choir. And um, so the network we are building, it's a membership-based network. This is based in Northern California, but you know, hoping that this model is successful and there'll be other regional networks that will pop up around the world. Um, the network of climate change solutionaries across sectors and communities and providing opportunities to connect and collaborate and build relationships with each other across community um, and supporting the grassroots leaders. And for example, um, a week ago Friday, we brought together um, about 80 people in Oakland to share best practices and what they were doing and present what they need and what they not want from, you know, based on their community projects. Some of our members include um, Shareable and Place for Sustainable Living, which is a, a local regenerative um, culture um, uh, site in in Oakland and a lot of uh, permaculture designers as well. So the project that we got funding for is called the Resilient Hubs Initiative and the vision is to support a network of demonstration sites and mobile units that are models for community resilience. So that includes community gardens and farms and neighborhood centers, libraries, schools, businesses, um, based on three pillars. The first one is uh, permaculture, you know, looking at gray water, rainwater, gardening, seed savings, um, low waste, composting toilets, just that demonstration site that has those kind of features and self-sufficient. And especially in um, Northern California, we're having lots of blackouts and really looking at solar um, with a battery powered backouts, blackout, ba battery powered solar so that when there is a blackout, you know, people have access to, en to energy. And then the pillars, the second pillar is community building, looking at, at these sites, how can we bring people together to work on these, these um, resiliency projects? And we bring people together for work parties, especially to work on gardens, gray water systems, um, et cetera. And then the third pillar is around disaster preparedness and response. And again, when there is, is a disaster, how can we bring people to that site where it's um, self-sufficient? Um, so we have pilot tested this in six sites around Northern California at a home, a neighborhood center, and a couple of gardens and farms. And we've gotten funding from local governments um, to support it. And we're hoping to get lots more funding um, with local governments, um, especially in, in foundations. And for example, we helped to install a 5,000 gallon rainwater catchment system at a home in, um, in Northern California. A bunch of people got together to do that. And 
Then we also worked at a school garden to help install another rainwater catchment system, brought together about 80 people to help um, support that really beautiful experience. And then we helped support another rainwater catchment system at a, a site that is owned by indigenous women in Oakland. And through our, our micro grant with Burners Without Borders, we helped to support um, Sharina Thomas, who um, she de delivered a workshop around emergency response with the focus being for um, folks in urban communities. So we supported her workshop for about, um, I think it was about 60 people at one site, 40 people at another. Um, and in terms of what's next, we're building up our online communication um, tools and publishing stories about these sites, fundraising to support projects in underserved communities, um, hoping this model can really spread. Um, there are resiliency hubs around, you know, they call themselves resiliency hubs around the world, but we think that our pillar, especially around community building and equity and inclusion is, is really, is really unique. So, yeah, our vision is to have lots of resiliency hubs around, around, um, not just in Northern California. So, I'll take some time for questions. Should I unmute? Yeah, for questions, people can either unmute themselves or if you want to write them in the chat box, Molly and I can. Read them to Susan. Um, okay. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay. I know that, guys. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, someone at Burning Man. I don't know. It's actually very funny. I'm told they're actually saying it there. I'm just too loud. Hey, Celine, can you mute yourself unless you have a question? Just a little loud back there. So I have a question. Um, the rainwater catchment system, is, um, how are they being used? The rainwater catchment systems that were installed, um, they are being used for um, the, the one for the will be used for the neighborhood. Um, it's in the backyard of a home, but will be used in the case of disasters for a neighborhood. Right now, it can be used for you know that particular home, but in the case of disaster, it can be used for the whole um, for the whole neighborhood. And especially with California being prone to droughts, um, really important to have that. Um, are they installed in houses that are um, like communities, uh, like like? Um like like schools or or these private houses that have volunteered to attack yeah so the intention of the hubs is that it's sort of an all-encompassing model where some of the hubs are homes that are really community based like this this particular home they have um it's a very tight-knit community where they do lots of different community work so that that system is for the it's for the neighborhood and then other hubs are in schools, they're in community centers, um, and we hope to have them, you know, at libraries, et cetera. So some of them are public and some of them um, will be private. We had a question from Laurent that was about um, what funding models are being explored. Um, yeah, so many, many different funding models. First, first is the, the support from local governments. We got funding from a local um, water agency, for example. We're, all, we're also looking at um, private foundations. We've gotten some funding from private foundations. Eventually, we would love, we're exploring the model of a, our own fund and just pooling money from individual donors. The Bay Area is chock full of lots of wealthy people. So we would love to, we're looking at exploring that model of our own fund that to, we can then re-grant funding to, you know, like Bur Burners Without Borders, we can then re-grant 
funding to other hubs. Um, yeah, so, you know, kind of the usual funding sources, fundraising events, um, but mainly from local government agencies. And Desiree asks, how are you scaling the hubs beyond California and have you chatted with resilient cities? Um, we have been talking with hubs from around the country, but we really want to focus on Northern California and kind of pilot test this model here and then, you know, get the vision, yes, is, is the scale it. And I, I did post um, shareable, they actually wrote a how-to guide for resilient hubs. And so we hope to have online resources so that we can scale it up and share the model worldwide. And resilient cities, um, we actually are meeting with the resilient, you mean the, the Rockefeller Foundation and their resi resilient cities model? Is that what you're talking about? Um, we're, we're actually meeting with the, the, the community resilience officer from Oakland, for example, and talking about, you know, resiliency hubs and how can we, they could support that model. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just getting started. You know, it's, it's, I think it's, um, it's a model it, whose time has come, you know, and, and we're hopeful that we can, you know, get get more support from for it. Um, Puerto Rico, for example, has they, they had the their mutual aid centers, which you know is a very similar model. And uh, Shareable even actually has a, a video, a film they made about Puerto Rico. I encourage everybody to see that called the response um, about mutual aid centers. Are there any sites you would like to take on but haven't do the logistics? Um, I mean, we're just, again, we're just getting started. So I think there will be community challenges. I think the important thing is, is to work in communities that want this model and also, and ask them what does resiliency look like to you and ask what projects they want. Like do, you know, we're doing community site design um, workshops as opposed to ju just working with like one, one person around it. So, you know, Getting, getting the support from the site itself, from the community first. And a little bit further up the chat, Applesauce asked if you could talk a little bit more about the work that you've done with community gardens. I know you mentioned it in the presentation. Yeah, we've, we work with a couple of community gardens and farms around here. The Gill Tract is one, Ashby Garden. And you know they already are an amazing hub for food security and a lot of them do have the rainwater catchment for example but how can they support um disaster relief is is a question um many of them don't they don't have supplies for emergency relief and you know we know that they they can um so um the Sigorte land trust is one that is a community farm that has a big disaster catch a lot of this the challenges are, are around funding. You know, a lot of the work we do is in underserved communities and they need money to actually purchase these um, supplies. So that's a, a big intention is that we raise the fund to, to help support them. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I just um, I have a question. Have you ever considered a sustainable membership um model like patreon there's a, a site that i use called with friends uh that offers people the opportunity to contribute three or five or fifteen dollars a month um and they get you know rewards and stickers and patches i wonder if that's something you would consider so what's that called again well the the site that i use is called with friends uh-huh friends.co okay um, I have an art collective that has about 55 members, so we earn about $230 a month, plus people can contribute annually uh, as well, so you know you can get a big chunk of like 150 bucks for somebody who cares about your, uh, your cause and can't find the time or energy to contribute, but, but has the finances to contribute. 
Yeah, we are open to any and all suggestions. I think part of the money definitely, we, we, you know, we'd love to see the money for the community by the community. And that seems like a really great um, resource. I Yeah, so I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk you through it as well. It may be we yeah. through, through Molly or Kristen. For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the, the big dollars, the small dollars, it's all, it's all great. And it's not just about the dollars, it's also about sharing resources as well. For example, if a hub in one city has access to, you know, equipment that the other, that, that another hub needs, then, you know, providing that communication so that they can share resources with each other and share skills and, and, and come to each other's um, work parties and, and meet each other and build bridges across community as we're building resiliency and self-sufficiency at the same time. And Molly and I talked about how these cubs could be, you know, support and, you know, art even from, from, from Burning Man and, and really serve as, um, you know, places that are, beautiful as well as you know self-sufficient so you know lo lots of ideas um, and opportunities for these hubs it looks like we had one more question come in through the chat box from Nick Farr and we can we can have that be the final question if we want and it's uh, what are some of the challenges in keeping communities invested in the sites um, I, th I think part of, part of it is um, around just grassroots organizing challenges in general that many of these organizers are just are volunteer and they're just spending their own time doing this kind of work and so are, are just super busy. And also, um, again, the funding piece, trying to find the resources to get the projects um, up and running. And I also feel like we really need some sort of leadership training around community organizing. It's not necessarily in our DNA right now to do this kind of work. And so we really want to help, we want to support more leadership training to really empower people to really um, work in their neighborhoods and their communities. And where I live, it's not necessarily natural that people get to know their own neighbors. And so it's just kind of like changing that paradigm and saying like, wow, it's okay to talk with your neighbors and bring them together to work on resiliency projects together. So that's part of the challenge and the opportunity as well. Hey, Susan, I have one question because I know you probably have to jump out soon. Um, but I was wondering, is, is there a way that people on this call are able to support you or the projects you're working on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you are interested, there, there are many ways to support right now, you know, with the, the online resources, we're, we're finalizing our sort of phase two, which is the, the criteria for the hubs and um, the phase two of our online guide. And if you're interested in looking at that, interested in looking any, you know, supporting any of our strategic planning, or want to become a hub yourself. Um, it, if you're in Northern California, we'd love, love to see that. If you're interested in donating to the project, that would be wonderful and amazing as well. So I can post my email. And yeah, I'd love to hear from, from any of you if you're interested in the project. Um, again, I feel like it's, it's a super replicable and scalable model that is happening um, already in many, in many places. So, yeah. Are you OS the info? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I think it means open source. Oh, are you open source? Uh, yes, yes. Open so yes. And we're actually developing a new website that should be up and running in like two weeks. So our old website is doesn't really have that much information, but our new website will have a lot more um, information. So stay tuned. Well, thanks everybody.